the the cool thing about all this is don't don't be afraid to actually really attack those strings because if you if you hit it too clean and this is something that Hendrix does and Stevie Ray really does uh, John Mayer does a lot a lot of people if you really dig into that and you're on like a slightly broken up amp sound where it's a clean channel but it, the tubes are just being driven um, you really get some attitude. If you just do it clean, this is kind of what it sounds like. Now that was me doing a little chicken picking, but that was trying to just, just pick those notes cleanly. But now if you start scraping down some strings, you gotta watch where you mute and everything, but don't worry about getting dirty or not being so perfect, because this is one of those solos you just kind of go for. So it's uh And even there you hear some other notes ringing out. But it's okay because it just really uh gives a little more attitude. So one more time. That next section, um, actually, before we get into that next section, let's go over a few notes. And and now, again, he's not doing a lot of a lot of notes in this whole thing. That whole first section is basically just this. It's those four notes: the second fret of the D string, uh, the fourth fret of the D string, second fret of the G string, and fourth fret of the G string. And then, of course, you're bending that fourth fret up a whole step. Now, besides that note there sliding up to the fifth fret, it's all within those four notes. Now, the reason why that works is because the first chord that he's playing is, it's an A chord, right? And he's bending this note up. And that note's being bent up to the C sharp, which is the major third of A. Right? Then the next chord is E major. And he does this. He lands on that note. And that is the B note, which is the fifth of E. So, so far you have this note to this note, then it goes to an F minor chord, and now that's the, again, that's the root, that's the F sharp, right? Then it goes to the G chord, this is where he slides up, a half step to that root note of G. So that's why that's working. You have a major third, you have a fifth of the next chord of E, then you have the root of F, and then the root of G. And again, that's a, a you can bend these notes however you want, and you can play your pentatonics however you want, but if you examine a lot of solos that use one or two notes, a lot of the times that's what's going on. They're being bent to chord tones that are very strong. Um, so that's kind of why that beginning works so well. Anyway, so let's now get into the uh, second section. So then after that, um, this, again, you go back to that A chord, and he's just running up an A major arpeggio, which is the third, uh, the sixth fret of the G string. You slide into that. And then you just go up the 5th fret of the B string, E string, and back down to the 5th fret of the B string. So that's... Then you play the 8th uh, fret of the B string, and you bend that up a whole step. And that's bending up to that A note, which is the root. So you're on A, and you're going up the A major triad. Then you play the minor 7 bend that up to the root. 
Now again, you kind of dig in there. Don't just... You kind of really want to hit those. So it doesn't matter if you're doing the double stops at the same time. Then the next part is the seventh fret of the B string bent up a half step. Up and down a half step. And then you resolve on that fifth fret of the B string, which is the E note. And again, now that's over the E major chord. And he lands on the root, which is, the, so the first time on the, over the A chord. That's the root of A, right? Then he goes, and that's over E, so that's the root of E. Um, and if you notice, he's playing basically the ninth, and he's bending that up to a minor third. Then over the F, uh, the F minor chord, he goes, before the F minor chord, this is still over the E actually. That's basically going down to the fourth fret. Um, again, you could think of this A major um, pentatonic, the fourth fret of the G string, and going. It's the same phrase as this phrase. But then he adds something to the end. So it's fourth, bent up and down a half step. And then you go to the second fret of the G string hammer on and pull off the fourth fret back to the second fret. So that whole thing is. And after he hammers on and pulls off, he goes down to the fourth fret of the D string and back up to the second fret of the G string. So that's. This is where he does a little run that's, it's actually kind of a little awkward the way he does it and goes into, uh, uh, into those six intervals. Um, this run basically goes, uh, so that's bending the fourth fret up a whole step on the G string. So it's... And then you're going... up the second fret of the B string and the E string. So it's... And then he goes to the fifth fret, second fret, and open string on the B string. So that's... goes to the second fret and fourth fret of the G string, then the fourth fret of the D string, back to the second fret of the G string. So that whole phrase is... When he slides up those six intervals, again, it's he doesn't rest on that note at all. He slides immediately into it. And that's where that, for me, it was a little awkward feel. Um, so it's sliding from that second fret on the G string to the sixth fret of the G string. Then you play the fifth fret of the E string. So you're skipping the B string. And that's basically an A major uh, chord, kind of. So you have. Then you slide up to the ninth fret. So to the ninth fret of the G string and the eighth fret of the E string. So that's. And then you slide up to the 11th fret of the G string. And this time you play the B string. You play the 10th fret of the B string. And if you notice, that's, that's over a G chord at this point. And you're playing.
play in the ninth, which is a pretty hip tone to play over a, a major chord. So that whole thing is... <laughs> It's that note actually twice, so it's... Then he gets into this bending section that's, uh, it's pretty cool actually. It's, he just, he really digs into it. I don't know how many times he does it, I should have counted it off, but, um, it's basically bending up from the 12th fret on the B string up a step and a half. And then he plays the 10th fret on the E string. And he does that, I, I didn't count how many times he does that. He does it a lot. And if I play it without music, it kind of sounds like your ears are going to bleed, so I'll spare you that. <laughs> 